Hello people! My name is Ginny Medwell and I am a fourth generation witch, although I might be a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, twentieth generation witch, but nobody in my family can remember beyond my great grandmother. I practice traditional witchcraft or the old ways as they are known and this is taught to me by my mother, my family, my friends, my coven, who are very good. They're very good. So I study and practice traditional witchcraft or the old ways and so today's video I want to look at that archetypal piece of witch's equipment, the cauldron. Now the reason why I want to do this video is because I've just ordered a cauldron online which turned up this morning. Now I haven't unpacked it yet so I thought we'd do a little bit of unboxing, have a look at what we're going to do with the cauldron, maybe do a spell, give you a little history behind it and tell you what you would do with your cauldron. Maybe give you some ideas and we'll discuss the purpose of a cauldron as part of a witch's tools and craft. Now the reason I bought a new cauldron, apart from the fact that I never buy anything new for myself, is that I have always used my old copper pot, which is a natural metal, very good in witchcraft. However, I also use my copper pot as part of cooking. And it is sometimes quite generally important to keep your witchy tools separate from your daily use tools. Now the reason is, that if I was to create, say, a love spell in my pot, in my copper pot, and then go on to cook some strawberry jam, the strawberry jam might pick up the remnants of the love spell that's in the pot, the energy from it, unless I have properly cleansed it. And I don't mean cleaning, I mean cleanse the energy of the pot. And so my spells are particularly harmless in that way. I do not ever use my spells to force someone to do something, to change their viewpoint. I help people come to understand where they want to be and how to get there without forcing other people to change to their tune. So my spells are very unharmful. However, that is my path and your witchcraft and your path might be slightly different. You might be a bit more forceful in your witchcraft and therefore it's really important that you separate your witch's craft tools from your daily use tools and don't mix the two. So just before we get to the unboxing, I wanted to tell you about how I chose this vessel. I didn't want the traditional cauldron with the tripod legs. I needed it to sit on a portable gas fire or a portable stove so that I can, you know, cook things. I also wanted something that I could set down directly on an outdoor fire or hang from a tripod over an outdoor fire so it can be used in lots of different ways. It was also important for me to choose a vessel that was made from natural materials. Now this was important because natural materials and by which I mean wood, iron, earthenware, stone, natural materials take on something that a lot of traditional witches call sprawl. I'll spell that word for you, sprawl. I won't spell that word for you, I'll say that word for you, sprawl. Sprawl is your earth magic, your power, your command of energy. And everything has a bit of sprawl. So the earth has sprawl in bucket loads. Animals will have sprawl. Um, Trees, nymphs, fae, they all have sprout. And when you knew something made of a natural substance such as wood or iron or earthenware, you are taking that sprout, that natural magic that is inherent in that equipment and adding that into your mix of spells, which means it's just like a battery boost of power. Right, let's get to the unboxing. I'm so excited, I bought it off the internet from a company that doesn't need any more advertising than it already has. So, I've got a knife, let's have a go. So excited, I never buy anything new for myself, especially with regards to being a witch, only because I tend to find things in nature and I'm naturally as tight-fisted as the tongue and don't like spending stuff on me. <gasps> so, we've got some plastic and another box. Not huge, but that's just the size I want it because you know potions come in all shapes and sizes. Let's 
get open because we're going to get into this now. I'm not very good at opening boxes. I tend to tear my nails off in the excitement. So, oh, here we go. I absolutely love it, is my first impression. Now this is a Japanese uh, cooking pot by Kitchen Craft actually. And the reason why I chose a Japanese pot is because for many years I had a Japanese spirit guide. My Japanese spirit guide was with me for 20 or so years of my life. Sadly, you know, we have, he's moved on to past as new because we have discussed everything that we needed to discuss with each other, although we do still speak. Um, and he therefore instilled in me a love of all things Japanese and said, this is essentially just a ramen or some such one pot cooking pot. But cast iron, it's got the two handles so that I can you know, hang it up above a fire and a very lovely wooden lid. I'm particularly pleased with this, my new purchase. Now, the first thing I normally do when I get something for my craft is to lay my hands upon it and read the object. This is called a psychometry. Psychometry? Psychometry. And it is the reading of an object and taking it as impressions. Now, I don't think I'm gonna get many impressions when I tune in because this is a factory built new model. So, you know, it doesn't have a history to tell me. However, there might be something. If you would like to me to do a video on how to read objects or psychometry, leave me a comment below and we'll see if we can do one. So let me have a quick go and see what I get. There is some female association with it, which I think is the worker who took it out and checked it, as, as that's the impression that I'm receiving, and put it in its box. So, so this cauldron doesn't have any background embedded into it, and that is something that I expected to happen. However, I do want to make sure that it hasn't picked up any of the negative energies, any of the person's hands that it has passed through. Therefore, I'm going to do a quick cleansing. Now, to cleanse an object such as this is really depends on the object. Now, the way I would cleanse my cauldron is to use my pendulum. And this pendulum here is the one that I would ask. I used the pendulum to find out exactly how my cauldron required cleansing and the answer is as follows. The first thing that was required was to wash my new pot in plain water and dry it carefully. This is a piece of rose quartz abound with copper wire which I then placed inside the cauldron. I also added this piece of chrysocolla to my cauldron. Finally, using my wand, I asked the stones to cleanse the cauldron for me. Stones will remain in there for an hour or so, and then the cleansing is complete. A lot of traditional witches would birth their tools. Now, birthing their tools, they would go to a large stone with a natural hole in it, a bit like one of my hag stones, but 40 times the size and they would pass the tool of their trade through the hole in the stone, birthing that particular item. This would be done on a full moon or a new moon or a, you'd get your planetary alignments right and birth your cauldron. For cauldrons were always used and are used by witches as vessels of change. So they are a womb of generation or a tomb of consumption as they are traditionally known as. So the womb of generation just means that they might generate some magic or they can destroy something else. Traditional folk history gives them as having life-giving properties. Merlin, the great wizard of Arthurian legend, was brought back to life in Dagda's cauldron by Nimue, his witch and helpmate. Cauldrons have always formed a huge part of British folk history. Dionax cauldron was one of the 13 treasures of ancient Britain. The 13 treasures are very simple 
things like a halter, a knife, a cauldron, a cloak, etc, etc. They were everyday items. Merlin, that great wizard of Arthurian legend, spent his life finding these 13 treasures of Britain and collecting them into one place together so he could use them to ensure Albion, which is Great Britain in personification, would last forever. My favourite magical cauldron of folk history was that of Keridwen, who was a Welsh giantess or druidess. Stories differ. She brewed a potion in a cauldron for a year and a day. This potion made you clever, accomplished and handsome and she wanted it to be used on her son who was none of these things. However, in a roundabout way, this potion then became imbued into the womb of Keridwen and she gave birth to Taliesin. Now Taliesin is a very famous 6th century Welsh bard. He has made a rather wonderful prediction about Great Britain, which I think might be coming true as we speak. Their Lord they shall praise, their language they shall keep, their land they shall lose, except wild Wales. Now I like this because we as Britain have given our language to a lot of other cultures and it is considered English, the standard language of the world. We have lost quite a lot of our land, you know, Ireland is moving further and further away from us, as is Scotland. So we're still sort of keeping Wales, aren't we? I'm not quite sure what the Lord that they shall praise is about, but that'll come to us, I'm sure. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this. Taliesin was a bard and druid, remember, so it's one of my favourites, this one. looked at my cauldron and studied it a bit I think I'm going to do my first spell is I'm going to make a potion in it and this potion is going to be a bathing potion so it's going to be some bath water I'm going to put it in my bath it's going to change me from being rather tired and stressed especially with my homeschooling which I'm not very good at to happy and relaxed so this is my spell for a healing bath water salt First of all, a large tablespoon for cleansing and protection. The next ingredient I'm going to add is a couple of dried bay leaves for purification and healing properties. My third ingredient is a rather large slice of an orange for happiness and love. And then finally, I'm going to add just a few sprinkle of dried nettle, which protects against all negative energy. This is then covered with some moon water. Give it a stir and bring to the boil, gently simmering the ingredients together for a couple of minutes. Place on the lid and let it cool slightly and then you can pour it into a bowl. This is now ready to add to your bath. So I do hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, let me know in the comments below what you're going to do with your cauldron. Have I given you any ideas? I hope so. Do give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. I'll see you in my next video.